We're in Boise, Idaho. We're in the Mountain West Conference. Major implications here. It's the final week of the regular season, and the madness is already starting here inside Extra Mile Arena. Big time matchup tonight with a couple of probable tournament teams in the Nevada Wolfpack and the Boise State Broncos. As we walk to your court sides, we'll get to that in just a moment because you'll look at where these teams are at right now. Five teams in the Mountain West Conference within one game of the top spot fighting for a Mountain West Championship title. My name is Trent Rush alongside Dan Tickow tonight. Dan, we talk about implications for this one. Absolutely loaded for what should be a fun night tonight. It should be an incredibly fun game tonight. A great atmosphere. Boise State looking for their fourth Mountain West Championship under Leon Rice. For Nevada, they're in the tournament as of now, but they'd love another big win heading down the stretch. A quad one win to go a long way. Now for Nevada, Nevada, look at the starting lineups here. Keenan Blackshear has missed the last two games. He's the second leading scorer, one of the leading scorers in the Mountain West Conference back in there. That is a key player for the Wolfpack to have back. Well, he's back from injury, as mentioned. He's an extremely versatile point guard at 6'6". Can do a ton and of different things that provide problems for the opponent. Blackshear was dealing with that right calf strain. He suffered in the game against San Jose State, and no doubt, Steve Alford and the Wolfpack happy to have him back. Meanwhile, the opening tip ends up in the hands of Max Rice through all of it, even though Boise State did not look like they were going to win the opening tip. They get the first position here of this ball game. You're going to see a Nevada team that plays solely man-to-man -man defense. They don't give you anything easy, but they don't pressure the ball either. Max Rice shot fake on senior night, launching the three, slips off the iron. Second chance coming for Boise State. That was a problem in the first matchup between these two teams. Boise dominated the glass 43 to 24 down in Reno where they got the big road win. And Boise State has a lot of success against Nevada of late. They've won five of the last six against the Wolfpack, but that game 65-56 in Reno. Foul there on Coleman, and that's a big foul. That's a key defender for Nevada to lose early on as Dagan Hart misses the three. Going to see a lot of dribble handoff actions as well as double downs for Jared Lucas, one of the best shooters in the Mountain West. Third leading scorer in this conference. And has had some heroic moments already. There's Blackshear. Welcome back. No, it's no good. Roddy Anderson, transfer from UC San Diego, has been that missing piece for Boise State, that point guard position. Meanwhile, underneath, Stanley ends up shooting in traffic and scoring the first points of this game. And Stanley has been a revelation down the Mountain West stretch play. Spent two years in St. John's. He has a knack for scoring on the interior through contact. Coming off a 24 and 13 rebound performance against New Mexico. As we saw Boise State sweep New Mexico this year. Davidson's an interior player. Will shoot the three to keep you honest, but missed that one. Right back to Stanley. All kinds of traffic. Himes there to force the miss. Dagan Hart and Lucas fighting for it, and it's going to be Nevada basketball. Get another look at Omar Stanley. Good low post position over the top of KJ Himes. He is extremely versatile, quick, strong, can score over either shoulder. And can be an explosive score. He had a 30 point game earlier this year. And as with a lot of players in the transfer portal, it's taken them a little bit of time to get comfortable. The breakout game was earlier this year in Spokane where they played a neutral site game against Washington State. 23 points. Trey Coleman, first double-double of the season. Great crowd on hand late night here in Boise, Idaho. Max Rice. The feed right there, and it's Stanley again going to work on Himes. That time a blocking foul. Trey Coleman showing off some range early on. He has played really well 
as Trey Coleman in league play. Will we get another look at this foul? Oh, yeah. K.J. Himes not able to slide his feet where he struggles laterally, keeping defenders in front, gets called for the foul. Stanley showing us some range of his own, but he missed. Jared Lucas going to run the point here for Nevada. They have a bevy of point guards. Some by design, some by accident. And happy to have that at this point in the year with McIntosh able to come off the bench. Blackshear is the primary point guard, and that right calf looking just fine as he goes to the hoop. And you talk about the difference for Nevada, their attack with different point guards. Blackshear gets the majority of the minutes. He's missed a couple games recently with injuries. But with that being said, Hunter McIntosh will come off the bench. Tyler Rollerson, they push the pace a little bit more, but they give Steve Alford a number of different ways to attack the defense. Pick and roll actions, dribble handoff actions, as well as pushing in transition. Lucas has been electric this season for the Wolfpack, and he just knocked down the jumper. One of the things about Lucas is his consistency. Every game this season but three has been in double figures, and those three all nine points apiece. Tyson Dagenhart gets points and stayed back with a possession. Max Rice's roommate to go way back, and it is a real family vibe here at Boise State. You can feel that Rice and Dagenhart, in many ways, the heart and soul of this Bronco program. Lucas now launching from way deep. There goes Rice. From the left side. Now Lucas in transition. For Davidson, his job tonight has to be, be big on the glass. Himes underneath, but he walked before it. Boise State. Down by three Pretty right cool. out here at home. They'll turn over. They'll have the ball back when we come back. Tyson Dagenhart, a little pick and pop action. Roll to the hoop for the bucket. Nevada by three. Some of the very best in the Mountain West on display tonight. It is a rocking atmosphere everywhere in this conference, and we have a good one here tonight. Keenan Blackshear for Nevada. Boy, it's nice for the Wolfpack to have him back. Hey, they're glad to have him back. He's missed a couple games with a lower leg injury, but he is a difference maker. Game time comes. Decision-making time comes. Alfred trusts the ball in his hands, and for the Boise State Broncos, you want somebody that can create on their own but also understands how to play off the ball. Tyson Degenhart is exactly that for Leon Rice. Right now, the officials explaining to Steve Alford how the opening tip was initially possessed by Nevada and then Boise State had it. And it was a bit of a loose ball situation. They got the arrow straightened out, so they actually granted the opening tip to Boise State even though Nevada had the first possession of the game. Alba, a lot of space on that left wing, doesn't drop, and so far, Boise State had a hard time shooting at home. Nevada dodged a bullet there. Very rarely do they pick up full court pressure and trap. They did that time. Alba's left wide open with miscommunication and rotation. Eleven to shoot for Davidson down low, who's really come alive of late. Inside out actions, a missed three for Lucas. Can't give him too many of those looks because he can get hot in a hurry. And Mountain West play leads the conference in three point percentage. Rice gets stuffed going to the hoop. And for this Nevada team, it's not like they want to live on the outside. They're the kind of team that wants to get into the paint, but Steve Alford will take it. Hey, when you're knocking down threes as a team, he's good with it. Well, they have capable shooters. Lucas, we've touched on. Hunter McIntosh, who just checked in the game. Uh, he is a, absolutely a capable shooter, but they want to get them off of dribble drive actions or post-ups where then they spray the ball around the perimeter. Bryce thought he was bumped, ends up out of bounds, and that's a turnover. And Boise State 
five-game win streak. Their offense has been absolutely clicking as of late. And many times, such as tonight with senior night, the emotions are a little different. The excitement's a little different. You get out of your pregame routine right before tip-off. They've struggled here in the first five and a half minutes or so on the offensive end on the floor. Meanwhile, Nevada, perfectly comfortable being on the road. They're 7-3 and three this year in 10 true road games. And they've won four in a row away from their home building here in Mountain West action. So they take a four-game road win streak into tonight. Looking for some revenge against Boise State. Coleman underneath, running out of time. Two to shoot, missed it. Stanley the rebound. Great Abo. defense from Abo there. You stand your ground, contest vertically as the shot clock winds down. Anderson lost a handle on it, stripped by Lucas, but saved. Boise State's missed their first six threes to start this game, haven't scored in two and a half minutes. Martin, fake a pass, make a shot. What a play there from Degenhardt to Martin. Martin the cut. Because of his passing ability, Nevada respects the ball fake. Ends up scoring on his own. Martin's such a unique player. Comes in off the bench as a big. Leads them in assists per game on the season. Lob pass intercepted. Well off from Anderson. Second turnover and three trips for Boise State as Nevada sets up. Still up a little point. Davidson through the double team. Off the mark. Broncos trying to go quickly here. Rice the baseline. Fall away two. Got it. Max Rice has such a unique offensive game. Limitless range beyond the three-point arc and unbelievably crafty when he puts the ball on the deck. And now Nevada's closing in on almost four minutes without scoring. McIntosh one of the point with Blackshaw on the bench. Lucas for three. Got it. Tremendous job there from Lucas of reading the defender as he comes off the screen. Defender goes inside, simply pop back behind, catch and shoot. That's an area of his game. Steve Alford told us at shoot around. He's really improved upon from his first couple years at Nevada to this season. Tyson Dagenhart underneath. Takes the feed and scores from traffic. Another example of just the great feel and IQ passing ability of Cam Martin in that high low. McIntosh, the Elon transfer. 12 to shoot for Nevada. Looking for who else but Jerry Lucas. Six seconds. McIntosh fires. He's been hot, and he gets another. He's been hot as right. Last three games with Blackshear being out, average almost 15 per, over 50% from the three-point line in 31 minutes. But most importantly, zero turnovers in that three-game stretch. It's amazing. He was supposed to be the point guard anyway, but here he is now in a bench roll and coming up big. Hunter McIntosh able to knock down the three for Boise State on the dish from Jared Lucas. And it's the Wolfpack with a three-point lead. Saturday, it's a huge regular season finale on Fox. First, 10th-ranked Creighton takes on Villanova at 2.30 Eastern. Then at 5, 8th-ranked Marquette battles Xavier. And in primetime, second-ranked UConn faces Providence. It all tips off Saturday on Fox. Amazing time of year in college basketball. Leon Rice talking to his Bronco team right now. These two teams having a hard time shooting so far, but for Leon Rice trying to get Boise State to a third straight NCAA tournament. They're on their way, but trying to handle business here in conference action first. You know, San Diego State gets so much of the acclaim in this league, and rightfully so, making it to the title game a season ago and as good as they've been, but Boise State has quietly been very, very good themselves under Leon Rice. 
11 20 win seasons under Leon Rice 18 total in program history so shows you the amount of success that he's brought here to Boise they are still searching for that first NCAA tournament win I think this team is built where they could break that streak and have been progressing as the season goes on you mentioned the wins for Leon Rice. Only Steve Fisher has more wins in Big West Conference history. Jason Whiting had a fire deep in the shot clock there. He missed. The backup point guard for the Broncos is Blackshear nearly got his pocket picked by Meadow, but able to get it underneath and a foul first after Daniel Foster was shoved. Meanwhile, of course, you have Steve Alford for Nevada, but look at his last play. Well, Meadow almost came up with a steal and defensive black backflow in transition, able to find Foster after picking up the loose ball. Foster, kind of an unsung hero on this team for Nevada, does a lot of the dirty work defensively. He's really good on the ball. Doesn't score a ton, so doesn't get a lot of acclaim because of it. Talked with Steve Alford a couple of weeks ago, just about some players that have really emerged for him, and, and he goes, Foster is that guy. He, he couldn't wait to talk about Daniel Foster for what he brings on the defensive side. He's been scoring lately as well. Well, he's a four-year guy, so he understands what's wanted in Steve Alford's system. You know, in the NIL and transfer portal era, it's rare to see a guy who's been at the same place for that long of time. They are unbelievably valuable to any program. That's a foul there on Andrew Meadow, a freshman, who the Broncos are high on moving forward, but it did look like maybe Blanchier helped sell that call a little bit as there's Leon Rice, and we talk about the success that he has had for this Boise State program. Looking for an explanation here. Again, trying to make a third straight NCAA tournament. They've never done that before. They've never been to two in a row until last year. That's how Meadow gets the stop of Blackshear. Omar Stanley to the bucket. Gets hit on his trip, and awesome free throws coming. That's one of the areas that I think he is so difficult to contain is in transition, he can catch an attack. He's got good footwork. His handle is good enough where he can kind of keep you on your toes, and he is a willing finder of contact to get himself to the free throw line. Meanwhile, Steve Alford, 33 years, he's been a head coach in Division One college basketball. Of course, took those UCLA teams to three Sweet 16s. Nevada made the tournament last year. Ended up getting bounced in the first four. And that Nevada team a year ago, in some ways, according to the metrics, a little higher than this year's team. They were 33 when they got an at-large selection a season ago. They're 40 right now, but in so many ways, it feels like this Wolfpack team is more veteran, more experienced, and maybe better suited to have a deeper run in the tournament than a year ago. They very well could be. He is extremely high on this team, as he should be. He's taken five teams to the NCAA tournament, excuse me, five different programs. So he knows what a tournament team looks like. He believes this team is built in that manner. And we touched on NIL a second ago. Could you have imagined him in the NIL era? Because he was an All-American at Indiana, played in the 84 Olympics. NIL would have been limitless for him. Yeah, I'd be calling him for a loan. I'll just put it that way. McIntosh gets it knocked out of his hands. Rice to take away, finds Martin to save it. Meadow's gonna launch. Meadow knocks it down. Boise State missed their first six from beyond the arc. Meadow, not a great three-point shooter percentage-wise up till now, knocks down the triple from the corner. And McIntosh, the silencer, in response. Silencer is right. This crowd was ready to erupt if they were to get a stop there. This crowd's ready to erupt every time <laughs> Max Rice or Tyson Dagenhart touch the basketball. This is a terrific home court advantage at Extra Mile Arena. Speaking of home court advantages, the Mountain West has a lot of great venues. This being towards the top of the list for sure. Strong take by Whiting. Doesn't go. Second chance. Done.
Case Whiting got some start to the point guard earlier this year when Roddy Anderson was having trouble finding his way. He's taken on more of a bench role lately and has been really key for them. But Tylen Bulb just came back. And every time the Broncos get something going, the Wolfpack respond. Only his second made three of the season. Boise State in shoot-around worked on doubling. They were going to test Tylen Pope from the perimeter. He makes them pay on, their, on his first opportunity. Whiting trying to keep it going. Blackshear goes up for the rebound. Underneath. Let's find him. Tylen Pope. Uh, get back in defensive transition. You have to communicate. You got to get matched up. Boise State does it. Nevada makes them pay. You never know who's going to step up in a big spot in a game like this. It's Marsh and Pope is given the Wolfpack four-point lead. Wolfpack going for a fifth straight road win, trying to get it done here at Boise State tonight. Four-point lead for Nevada here is they are fighting for their spot in March Madness, and you just look at how good the Mountain West has been all year long. Six teams in the top 40 in the net. Well, they did what they needed to do in the non-conference. Every single team in the Mountain West had a winning record before you hit league play, so all of a sudden you get into league play and you start elevating each other's net when you're having big time quad one quad two wins the only other two leagues that can have that same boast the big 12 with seven teams and the sec with six it's been a remarkable year for this conference so those that may not be familiar the net is now the ranking the ncaa tournament selection committee is using that's the metric when they're making their at large bid selections and seating decisions is a big part of it meadow hit a three a moment ago can he get another yes Down critical stretches of a league title race. You've got to have bench guys step up at different moments. Whiting had a put back earlier. Meadow, two big threes early in this first half tonight. Meadow and Pope, two of the leading scorers in this game. Who had that for a couple of guys that averaged three points a game? How about for Boise State? Austin Meadow, two for two from behind the arc. Rest of the team, 0 for 8. Abo trying to change that here, left it short. There's Jared Lucas, a star in this league. Blackshear passed up a good look there. Not a big three-point shooter, though. No fire with 10 seconds to shoot off the mark. And no. Maybe we saw why he does on the first one. Uh, he definitely wants to put the ball on the deck and attack the rim. Typically, Andrew Meadow wants to get in the paint and play around the rim, but not tonight. Two big threes from each of the two corners. Boise State needs some production off the bench in unlikely places. They've gotten it early in tonight's ball game from him. Nevada by one. What's been a treat so far? Digging hard with the pose. That shows you a little bit of the growth of Roddy Anderson as a point guard. Understanding defense and how to pull them a little bit further out of position created extra space for Dagan Hart to line up the three from straight away. Three straight 20 point nights for Dagan Hart. Lucas gets it in traffic. They could have been called for a kick, but he also could have been called for somebody fouling him as he knocked down the shot. Terrific bucket there from Jared Lucas. So far this ball game living up to the hype. It's been physical, but we're starting to see some good offensive displays here as Stanley gets stuffed underneath. Blackshear converted wing, second year as a point guard for Nevada, and the Wolfpack throw it away. Tyson Dagenhart has this extra mile crowd, extra loud here on this Tuesday night. Well, he's so dangerous in pick and pop situations because of that, the ability to knock it down from deep. But Jared Lucas has gotten really good at reading screens. Comes off the tight, wide pin down, catches shoot. Big time knockdown from Jared Lucas.
We mentioned earlier Hunter McIntosh, a silencer. I don't know that there's a better silencer in the Mountain West than what we've seen from Jared Lucas this year. Meadow couldn't go three for three. And the thing about Lucas is he wants to play that villain role. He enjoys talking to opponents and even talking to the opposing crowd. My goodness, McIntosh with another three. That's his third tonight, three of three. And you mentioned he's shooting over 50% from behind the arc over the previous three games. Well, more of a backup point guard that sets guys up here in Nevada at Elon. He was a big time scorer, averaged nearly 16 a game as a sophomore in his three years at Elon, almost two and a half made threes per game. Anderson down low, taken away by Davidson as Lucas will push. Yeah, McIntosh was supposed to be the point guard last year, got hurt early in the season, forced Blackshear to have to take on that roll, wow. and McIntosh can't miss. Four for four for Hunter McIntosh, and the Wolfpack are up six. But as a young player, Roddy Anderson, you've got to understand your matchup, your scouting report. You can't leave a guy who's already hit three in the first half. 8-0 run for the Wolfpack. Ambo trying to stop it with Coleman, best on-ball defender showing why right there. Why not to McIntosh? Davidson gets hit in the post, but Hunter McIntosh absolutely on fire here in Boise. He has been the difference maker in this run for the Wolfpack to find themselves up six. Don't let him get open. Nevada looking for that finishing touch on their tournament resume. They have a six-point lead here at Boise State so far, thanks to this man, Hunter McIntosh. Uh, you want to see a player that has gotten on fire. Hunter McIntosh has been spectacular. A couple times he's gotten loose. He's made knocked down shots over the hand of the defender, but the last two has been miscommunications and missed rotations from Boise State. Once a guy gets hot, you have to find him. You can't give him open looks. You don't ever want a player getting hurt. But with Blackshear going down, suffering the calf injury, missing two games, that allowed McIntosh basically three games because Blackshear got hurt early in that game. He was injured. Three games to catch fire. And now this guy that's been a backup all year is getting starter minutes and making the absolute most of it. And it, it really adds another dimension to this Nevada offense. You, you know you're going to have to deal with Jared Lucas coming off pin downs, dribble handoffs, Blackshear as a point guard, back down scenarios. Davidson is a tremendous interior player who can post up, can score a little bit, but to add a shooter of McIntosh's caliber it just makes the scout that much harder when you face Nevada. It's a little bit like New Mexico who earlier in the year when Jalen House and Jamal Mashburn were dealing with injuries. Donovan Dent yes. kind of rose out of nowhere. He's become maybe their best backcourt player. And McIntosh is trying to take on that same kind of role here. Jalen Lucas sees that one slip off. Well, and the thing that McIntosh also provides is the ability to play a point guard position. He is a, he's shown that he's a very capable shooter, uh, obviously tonight, but over the course of his career. But, you know, he can get you into offense. He can create opportunities for others as well where that three-headed backcourt of Lucas and Blackshear, Lucas is more of a scorer, doesn't create for others, where Blackshear does create for others. Five to shoot now for Abo. picked up the last foul, trying to answer the three, can't do it. As, boy, Boise State to fall in love with the three ball, three of 14 to start this game. And not a normal offensive attack for Boise State. Give Nevada a lot of credit, not giving them anything easy, whether in post-up situations or getting downhill. All alone underneath his Foster, but not for long. Omar Stanley came out of nowhere for that swap. But Boise State worked on that exact set from Nevada in shoot-around. They talked about not messing up the communication. Boise State did just that. Omar Stanley recognizes it just in time. A spectacular block on Daniel Foster. How many times you get your defender up in the air and still get your shot blocked? A quick second jump, that's for sure. Stanley, big time athlete. Max Rice, son of Leon, six years in the program. 
Had it for a moment. Now it's to Anderson. A lot of contact. He scored through. Ends the drought of close to four minutes. Lucas underneath. Davidson stopped again. Omar Stanley. Oh, not tonight. McIntosh deflected it. Another turnover for Boise State. In the corner, all alone, Coleman, no. And that's going to be a foul on Davidson trying to keep that one alive. We are seeing Omar Stanley put on a clinic underneath. Well, you can be a great defensive team based on your principles, but sometimes you're going to be out of position. You usually have to make effort plays. Omar Stanley, back-to-back -back effort plays that resulted in blocks on back-to-back -back possessions. St. John's transfer listed at 6'8", but he has a 7'2 wingspan and is using all of it to get some of these rejections. Nevada up by four right now. Again, these two teams probably in the tournament. As they have a review here with less than two minutes to go in this first half, but this Boise State team right now 24 in the net, and they have really leaped over the course of the season to get to this point. Five quad one wins. Nevada also with five quad one wins. And that could end up being something pretty important for the selection committee. Again, even though Nevada's net is at 40 right now, if they can win at least one game here in the final two, they have this one at Boise State tonight, and then they're going to be against rival UNLV coming up this weekend. You win one of those, you feel like that should be enough for Nevada, but you never know. They never know, and you want to be playing your best basketball of the season come March, and, and they are playing very good. They've won five in a row. They've got UNLV, who's playing extremely well at this time of year as well to finish out the, the regular season at home, and then you got the conference tournament. Uh, but you look at both these teams, they did a nice job in the non-conference of challenging themselves and being ready to go. Uh, Boise State... Not all of those challenges resulted in wins, but they toughened them up, got them ready to go. Left side of your screen, it looked like Davidson got hit there by Abo, and the officials are looking at that right now to try to see where contact was as they continued to jaw with each other, running up the left side of the floor here. So that's what the referees are taking advantage of. It was not Abo, rather, it was Omar Stanley who was there, as Stanley and Davidson seem to be getting in with it right side of your screen there's Stanley yeah it was before that is Tony Padilla is directing traffic here making sure they get it right with Gregory Nixon and DJ Carsonson our officials tonight as Padilla explains to Steve Alford we'll get an explanation here as to what they're going to call so we'll just say inadvertent so there was uh, nothing doing right there so we had a review and we're just going to play on after that as we see Omar Stanley go to the bench. Good piece of officiating there by this trio who's got quite a bit of an experience. They didn't have an angle to make a true determination. Meanwhile, on the inbound, McIntosh got free somehow. The Broncos lost him. He's up to 14 points. Out of execution, baseline out of bounds. You got to take away the pass to the interior at the rim. Boise State doesn't. McIntosh makes him pay. Underneath, it's the Cam Morton. A lot of traffic there. Davidson's going to be hit for a foul, and we're going to see Cam Morton shooting free throws. By the way, on that last review, they didn't charge a timeout to Nevada and Steve Alford. So each team with three timeouts remaining here in this first half. That's only has a minute and 18 seconds left. Bit of a slow start to this game. It has picked up here down the stretch of this opening 20. Well, it's been played at a pretty fast pace. Neither team is outside of McIntosh beyond the three-point line is, is shot it particularly well, but a lot of that is due to the defensive efforts from both these ball clubs. They want to play the game in the mid to upper 70s. We're not on pace for that. Cam Morton got bowl. Four-point game at the moment. Nevada... 
the lead in the basketball. Coleman with Meta all over him, and they're going to call a foul on Meta. You can hear what the Boise State fans think of that. Oh, good call from the official. Coleman off that slice screen, got position. Meadow late to react. Wasn't vertical, leaning down over the top of Coleman. Easy call for the official. All kinds of space for Jared Lucas, who will make you pay every time from that ring. Well, last two opportunities with baseline out of bounds. Nevada has executed. First McIntosh layup. Lucas, the big time shooter, you can't let get free in that situation. Knocks down a three there. Seven point lead for Nevada, their largest of the ball game. Foul on the floor here is Jared Lucas, one of the top scorers in this league, third leading scorer in the Mountain West Conference with a ton of room on that last possession. Can't let him get free. Roddy Anderson goes underneath the screens. In a situation where you're guarding a shooter like Lucas, you got to stay locked on his hip and even trail him. Make him curl so where he catches it, it's a two-point opportunity, not a three. Rice in traffic, but Meadow flying through. I don't think it's going to count. And a foul first means two shots foul coming for Rice, but Meadow still getting this Bronco crowd excited. On the back. Rice is so crafty when he puts the ball on the deck to create contact, get himself to the free throw line. Davidson hits him across the face, which results in the two free throws. But you're right, Meadow has really provided a lot of excitement for this crowd. That follow dunk doesn't count, but the two made threes in each corner have been huge keeping Boise State within striking distance going into the half. Meadow performed well against St. Mary's earlier this year when both Boise State and St. Mary's were struggling to start the year. Two teams that needed to win, they played on a neutral site in Idaho Falls, and Boise State ended up winning the game by three. And now you look at the numbers, that's their most important win this season per the metrics to beat a team that's 17 in the net. Davidson just picked up his second foul in the process. There's McIntosh. Less than a second differential shot clock game clock. Three seconds. Coleman stopped by Rice, but a foul. What a pass from Davidson. Uh, threads the needle to Coleman. This crowd doesn't like that call. It looked as if Rice got quite a bit of ball. Ends up being charged in his first personal medal. And Coleman misses the free throws. Leon Rice coaching his son. Six years, Max Rice has been in this program. Fourth winningest player in Mountain West history. There's Trey Coleman. And the fans love the Rices here in Boise. One of two, good for Coleman. Final heave. And we're going to see Nevada go into the locker room with a six-point lead here at halftime. Coming up at halftime, we'll have the first half highlights and stats from this game. And we'll take you to Los Angeles where Rob Starr Casey Jacobson will highlight from around the country, including a big road test for number three, Purdue, at 12th ranked Illinois, 14th ranked Kansas. We're going to get back on track against rival Kansas State, number 16, Alabama, visiting Florida. That's all coming up. Nevada, one of the best road teams in the country, showing why in the opening 20 minutes here at Boise State. It's the Wolfpack 35, Broncos 29 as we welcome your courtside here at Extra Mile Arena with Dan Dickow. My name is Trent Raj, Dan. In the first half, it really, it seemed like it was a difference of three-point shooting as we saw Nevada making them all from downtown, and Boise State really struggled in the floor. Yeah, Boise State, three of 14 from beyond the arc. On the other side, Nevada coming off 11 made threes in their win over Fresno State. Eight made threes in the first half. Jared Lucas is a guy you cannot let get going pull up off of a pick and roll read gets him going a catch and shoot three off a great read when the defender gets caught 
is a positive sign for Nevada. On the other side for Boise State, Tyson Degenhart, such a high IQ player. Screen and roll, get opportunity, opportunities on the interior, and then what I call patient finishes off the cut. Let's take a look at what's going on across the rest of the country. We'll send you to LA on the other side of this break where Nevada leads here in Boise by six. Start of the second half here in Boise with Nevada up by six. Eight of 14 with the Wolfpack from downtown Boise State. Well, it's been a tougher shooting night for them. If you're Boise State, you got to like where you're at considering you didn't shoot the ball well and Nevada hits eight threes. The difficult thing to accept, though, is the fact that Nevada is 22-0 and this season when they've led at the half. So they understand how to play with a lead, how to protect a lead. Boise State's got to get off to a good start here in the second half. Broncos trying to get several key players going. Shibuzo Abo didn't score in the opening 20 minutes. There's Tyson Dagenhart trying to get started with a three. Can. There's Abo. Offensive glass, second chance. And it's going to end up. Well, they're still fighting for it here. Nevada ends up with a basketball after the scuffle, and, and now we're seeing the two on top of each other, pinned down like a wrestling match, and they're going to stop the game here with, it looks like <laughs> Stanley on top of uh, Coleman. Uh, I think it was on top of Jared Lucas. They Lucas. both go for the ball, and they kept going, rolling over and over each other. It's like a wrestling match. Extra Mile Arena, they have concerts, they have conventions. <laughs> I'm sure at some point they've had WWE here as well. You know what I like, though? Play on. Yes. Let's go. Let's just play basketball. That's the way it should be. The officials doing a nice job of not getting in the middle of a good basketball game. K.J. Himes, that was some foul trouble early. Goes with the left hand against the first bucket of the second half for Nevada. Any offense they get from K.J. Himes is a bonus. He's not much of a interior scorer when you throw him the ball in the low block. He's an offensive rebounder, get out and transition type player. They did call a common foul on Omar Stanley, so did want to clarify that. But Abo trying to get going for Boise State. Again, that's close to 14 points a game. Gets fouled on the three, and he's going to take three right here. But, boy, Nevada loves to get inside and make me relentless. Well, normally, it's Davidson on the interior. K.J. Himes this time takes his time because no double team is coming. He knows there's no double. Take your time. Get to your sweet spot. Usually, he's over the left shoulder. That time, over the right. Meanwhile, Davidson just picked up his third foul. And we're just over a minute into the second half. He has not scored in this game. Nick Davidson, who in his last nine games is averaging 17 and nine. Nevada has won eight of those nine games. But Davidson's such an important player for the Wolfpack in a game where rebounding is a critical element. That is a big player to have to go to the bench for a while for the Wolfpack. You're right. He has been playing really well. The one game in that stretch he didn't play well was at Colorado State where Lucas hit the half-court shot to win. Only two points in that game where he was 0 of 6 from the field. So foul trouble for Nick Davidson puts him on the bench. But even in that game, he still had 12 rebounds, still played defense. In this game, Davidson, just one rebound, no points, and on the bench with three fouls. And that's what good players do. They can impact the game whether they're scoring or not. Daniel Foster has just put the Wolfpack up by 10, 90 seconds into the second half. And it's another three. Nine made threes on the evening for the Wolfpack. Yeah, it just goes to show you right there. That, that last sequence has been the game so far. Nevada hits a three on one side. Boise misses another one on their end. I say evening. It's more like late night here in Boise. <laughs> 9 p.m. tip. Great crowd here considering the late tip. But you know what? Every crowd in the Mountain West feels really strong with these top programs. Yeah, Viejas, you got the Spectrum and... Logan, Utah. The pit. The New pit, Mexico. absolutely. So many good venues in this league. Looks like this is going to be a foul on Hines. And Nevada up by 10, 40 to 30. And that's now three on Hines. So this is interesting. So Hines has three. Davidson has three. And Boise State has maybe one of the best trios of big men in the Mountain West Conference. I'll be curious to see what... 
Boise State's able to do inside. And Nevada, they played best when they had their three-guard lineup in in the first half, partly because McIntosh got hot from beyond the arc. But Boise State needs to try to take advantage of the size, just as Degenhardt did on that possession. Put foul pressure on them in the low post. See if you can score or get to the line. But at a certain point, Dan, don't you have to think, like, Boise is not making threes. All kinds of foul trouble for Nevada in the post. You have these scoring bigs. You've got to be able to find ways to attack the basket, right? Yeah, there's, there's kind of both arguments of how to attack when you're struggling. I think really right now, the hard part for Boise State defensively, you know, they are one of the better teams in this league guarding. They're actually one of the better teams uh, statistically in the country over the last few years. They've got to get stops on the defensive end and particularly run Nevada off the three-point line where they've hit nine tonight. Boise State, top 30 nationally in defensive efficiency three years in a row now. There's Jared Lucas, after the two made free throws by Dagan Hart, got it back to eight. Deep in the shot clock, six seconds, Blackshear, Lucas with space, Lucas for three. Thought he was hit, doesn't go. We're also seeing Nevada's bench outscore Boise State by 10 right now, and in an eight point game, that's big. And well, it looks like Himes. Well, uh, they'll see who they call this. They're going to call this on a Holman, and that, or a Coleman, rather, and that's an important distinction because that would have been four on Himes. Well, it's four team fouls early in the second half for Nevada. Boise, a nice job of establishing position, accepting the double, and then putting foul pressure on. See if they can't get into the bonus early in this half. It's Roddy Anderson. Trying to direct traffic, feed the post. Stanley gets around the defense and scores. Well, you talked about his seven two, foot two wingspan earlier tonight. That was a great example on one side of the rim, able to inspect her gadget in his arms to the other side of the rim. Lucas in the corner, no. I was starting to see Nevada fall in love with that three ball. They were making so many early. Anderson gets swatted by Blackshear. Anderson trying to get it back and does. March intensity on display tonight. Dagan Hart to the bucket. No. Second chance. Yes. Winning plays is what Tyson Dagan Hart is all about. Doesn't quit on it. Is able to come up with the offensive rebound put back. Fourth leading scorer in the Mountain West Conference, up to nine in this one. 6 0 run in the last minute and a half. Blackshear pulled loose by Anderson. It's going to stay with Nevada, but the momentum pendulum is swinging to the Broncos. Boise State storming back, now only down by four. Get ready for the Big East Tournament on Fox and FS1. Who will rise up at the world's most famous arena and take the conference crown? It all tips off March 13th through the 16th on Fox and FS1. So much fun basketball this time of year. This is what it's all about. The fans here at Boise State and the band trying to bring the Broncos back in this thing. Once down 10, gone on a 6-0 run, has Boise State to cut it to four. Deep in the shot clock here, not a lot of time for Lucas. Three seconds, two, Lucas, and a foul with one on the shot clock as Roddy Anderson got Lucas. That's where Roddy Anderson is still growing as a young player. Plays with such energy and passion, but sometimes it can get out of control. Two previous possessions defensively, he came up with steals or deflections based on his energy, but you have to understand, shot clock winding down, you got to score like Jared Lucas, who's crafty. He creates contact, gets himself in the line extremely well. You can't put yourself in a position where he can draw that contact, get to the line. And Jared Lucas, who gets both there, is virtually automatic at the line. About 90%. Unless you're talking about the last 90 <laughs> yes. seconds at Colorado State, where he misses three of four, only to call game on a half-court heave, banked in off the wrong foot to win it. Shot of the year in the Mountain West Conference as Dagan Hart gets stopped. 
Yeah, I think Lucas made up for those made free throws with that half court game winner. Lucas again strong. You can see there was a concerted effort from Boise State trying to get into the lane. Stopped there by Hines. Stanley lost it. And a foul at the end of the play. Maybe out of frustration from Omar Stanley right there. And it looks like they just called a technical on him. So a T is going to go against Leon Rice. After Stanley didn't get the call here. I'd like a block all the way to me. What'd you think? It looked like a good play there from KJ Himes. So we're going to see Lucas at the line. Gets the free throw. So Leon Rice charged with the technical. Five minutes into the second half. Second winning as coach. And Mountain West history is built this Bronco program into national prominence. Boise State on their way to a third straight NCAA tournament appearance, which, again, the beginning of the season, that didn't look all that likely. The first net that came out, Boise State was 126. They moved up over 100 spots to have themselves right now, as Mike DeCourcy has in maybe a 10 seed in the tournament, as Jerry Lucas has another miss. They haven't made a field goal now in close to four minutes. Rice gets tripped up. Pullman ends up with a basketball. They're still fighting for it. Stanley and, and they're going to say that Nevada's going to take it on the jump ball. This game has become physical. Every possession, every cut or screen or battle for a loose ball within these possessions is being played with passion. You know, Nevada, Boise State, you like rough and tumble. They're known, especially here at Boise, for football. I'm going back to the Kellen Moore days and Colin Kaepernick for Nevada and what those football rivalry matchups were like. And we're seeing that kind of physicality and that rivalry on display tonight as Nevada quickly has a race that many run for Boise State. They're back up 10. And guess who? Hunter McIntosh has been terrific tonight. 16 points now. 16 points on six of six shooting. The perimeter defense of Nevada is really frustrating these Boise State guards. Good take there for Anderson. We're seeing Boise State right now searching right now. Right? They're able to score, but they're wanting calls. We're seeing a little bit of frustration. That's the first McIntosh miss of the night. And obviously, the the strength of Boise State lies in their front court. If they're going to make a run in the Mountain West tournament in any NCAA tournament, I think they're going to have to have a little better point guard play. Roddy Anderson's really improved over the course of the season, but this league has some great point guards. Hunter McIntosh with the finish. Roddy Anderson understanding and recognizing the double, get to an open space in the key, but you talk about the point guards in this league, Isaiah Stevens, uh, Dedon Thomas, freshman at UNLV, is incredibly good. Uh, Donovan Dent, Jalen House at New Mexico. Cardenas at San Jose State is overlooked many times. It is a difficult league for point guards. And the amazing thing is the one that kind of gets forgotten about is at San Diego State where Lamont yes. Butler hit the, the shot of the year in the Final Four to get San Diego State into the national championship game last year. When you look at the league and the point guards that I just mentioned, the one consistent outside of Dedon Thomas is the experience that they have, either upperclassmen or maybe even grad fifth-year players. So it shows you the challenge that Roddy Anderson has to start the year, and he's improved, that's for sure. Offensive foul there on Cam Morton, who's trying to seal for some space down low. An eight-point game, it's going to be the second on Cam Morton. That was right after Nevada point guard Tyler Rollison picked up his second. So, eight-point game, 
Nevada has the ball. It's Rawlison to bring it up. Davidson looking for his first points, and he gets it a three off the bench, knocks it down. And a timeout called by Boise State, but Nick Davidson, first bucket of the night, able to get it done, and Nevada has an 11-point lead. Boise State down by 11 on their home floor on an emotional night, senior night before the game, especially big for Leon Rice to see that man right there. Max Rice, six years in the program, that father-son moment. Hold back the tears, coach. An emotional display here. And when you think about the outstanding father-son duos, of coach and sons, and those that have done it, Stephen Bryce Alford, of course, three sweet 16s. Leon and Max Rice, with Max being the fourth all-time winningest player in Mountain West history. And there was something interesting. And I know, Dan, you were a part of this, but... You know, when Max is trying to decide where to go and, and should he play for his dad, he actually reached out to Bryce Alford, and they had a conversation, and Bryce basically told him, you got to do it. It's a great experience, and I know that that's something that you were involved in as well. Yeah, it's one of those things where I've known the Rice family since Leon was an assistant coach at Gonzaga while I played there, and family is very important to them, but mixing coaching your son and <laughs> family can be difficult yeah. they've done a terrific job of it and yes they've leaned on others such as the alford family to figure out how best to do it and they've both excelled in doing it meanwhile steve alford trying to spoil the senior night for the rices here at boise state Albo trying to get going here in this second half after a quiet first gets fouled with three seconds on the shot clock. Nevada has done an unbelievable job at not giving Abo any kind of space when he's coming off double screens or when he puts the ball on the deck. That time, Rollison giving up about six, seven inches, didn't give him an angle, didn't give him the ability to elevate over the top. Yes, he puts him at the line, but Abo's best in catch and shoot situations. He's 0 of 5 from the field, including four of those from the three point line. If Boise State's going to climb back into this, they're going to need him to find some opportunities. That's already the seventh foul against Nevada, so that's what put Boise State in the bonus here is Abo gets one of the two. 10 point game, less than 13 minutes left here on this senior night, in the final week of the regular season. Boise State will be at San Diego State coming up on Friday, and they're hoping that has Mountain West title implications, but they gotta take care of business tonight first, and right now, Broncos are in a hole. Davidson hit a three a moment ago, missed that one, and Max Rice gets the rebound. Boise State, you gotta understand, you can't get it all back in a possession or two. You gotta get stops, which is their one of their bread and butters, they're great on that end of the floor. But on the offensive end, you got to take advantage now that you've got foul opportunities in the bonus. Yeah, Rice was working for a long time in the post and just got stripped. Now Davidson on the post on the other side. Rice knocked it away, and it's going to be Boise basketball. Broncos in transition. Taking hard. Extra pass. And that's the opportunity Abo needed if he's going to get himself going. But credit Max Rice, the extra pass. Pass up a good shot to get a great one. This crowd is re energized. Sabuzo Abo knocks down the first three of the second half for Boise State, just their fourth all game. Meanwhile, an and one answer, Nick Davidson on the other side. To put the Wolf Pack back up by nine. Davidson with the bucket, but the previous possession, Abo getting himself untracked. The big three before Davidson, the crafty spin move along the baseline. Yeah. 
Wolf back up by 9, 11, 20 to go here in this ballgame. Jared Lucas, 14 points in this one, but he has just been a monster down the stretch for Nevada. You see the 33 he had at Colorado State. Misses three of four free throws down the stretch, only to answer with shot of the year in the Mountain West Conference at this point. That is definitely what you would call an answer after missing those three free throws. One of the things you got to love about Jared Lucas is he plays with a high level of confidence. If he misses a shot or two or three free throws, he doesn't care. He's coming back. He's ready to take the next opportunity. and He thinks it's going in. And for Jared Lucas, it hasn't been the best shooting night for Lucas, but he's getting his for sure. But for this Nevada team, I would imagine the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee is going to consider their road wins. And to have this many road wins in the Mountain West is a big deal as Davidson converts a three-point play. Well, road wins in this league are difficult to come by. And anytime you get a chance to take advantage, you've got to feel good about your performance. Boise State, on the other hand, they've lost a couple games here at home that they would love to have back. UNLV being one, as well as Utah State. And that Utah State one looks massive. That was a game that went to overtime. And, well, Danny Sprinkle in his first year at the helm of that program as the Aggies at the top of the standings with Boise State right now. Another thing to keep in mind, too, is Utah State, who Nevada beat in Logan, is not going to make the return trip to Reno with the unbalanced schedule, and that could end up playing a role as a conference regular season champion is determined. Rice. Great pass from Rice. Abo can't convert. Boise State just cannot buy a three right now. Four for 19. Blackshear in transition goes down hard. And that's going to be the second on Dagan Hard. This player has already dealt with some injuries. Needed some help getting up. Blackshear put so much pressure on the defense with straight line drives. Stegenhart can't keep him in front. A little push. Blackshear, hopefully he's all right if you're a Wolfpack fan. I wonder I wonder how much that right cap has bothered him there because the way he went up, he seemed really determined to, to favor that left side with the, the right side being what's been an issue. Well, calf is one of those injuries where it can take a, quite a bit of time to get right. Uh, it's one of those things you've got to be careful with because they can linger for quite some time if you come back too soon. And Blackshear, who misses the free throw, good for 15 points a game. Jared Lucas and Keenan Blackshear are the leading scoring duo in the Mountain West Conference. He misses that, but you see the numbers. Just two points so far for Blackshear tonight. He, he has not really been Keenan Blackshear. Well, in the first matchup, the two of them combined 10 of 30 from the field. They're struggling from the field again tonight. It's the other players from Nevada that has stepped up and made a huge difference, in particular McIntosh. McIntosh, five threes. He's got 19 points, and the Wolfpack are in complete control here at Boise State past the midway point. I mean, he has been spectacular. Rice trying to answer and does. So Max Rice able to get his first three of this game. He's got seven. And maybe that can spark something for the Broncos. Rice trying to take it right back and ends up picking up a foul in the process. But McIntosh has been unreal for the Wolfpack. Uh, but it's Blackshear breaking down the defense, putting them in rotation. So McIntosh has a big flying out at him. It's just a matter of creating extra space before you let it fly. Max Rice recognizes the defense, gets hung up going under the screen. And with his range, it doesn't matter if you're two feet behind the line or six feet behind the line. He's got space. He's going to let it go. His first made three of the night. Blackshear at the line here for Max Rice. He's been a streaky shooter this year. Started the season seven for his first 36. That's 19%. And has been well over 40% since then. 
to get to 36 on the season as Davidson goes back to the bench. Still playing with three fouls. Free throws missed. And even though Nevada has an 11-point lead, we mentioned how important the rebounding battle would be in this game early on. Well, Boise State has done their job on the glass. They just haven't been able to make shots. Double on Dagan Hart ends up resulting in a turnover. Nevada's been unbelievably connected on the weak side. When players go to double, that secondary defender is in the key, ready to take on the next cutter. Lucas gets hit. There's going to be free throws coming. Here's an example. Quick double on Degenhardt. Himes recognizes the cut from Martin, gets there early for the deflection, resulting in the steal. That's a defense on a string right there, rotating help side. Yeah, Nevada's been tremendous on that end of the floor. They've been connected is how coaches describe it. You're connected almost as if on a string, as you said, one player makes an adjustment, whether it's a rotation or it's a double team, and everyone else shifts at the same time to be in the next correct position. Right now, they're reviewing the play between Abo and Himes as Jared Lucas ends up going to the ground here. Lucas looks like he got tripped up. Abo. They're going to say that he shoved Himes on that. And that's what the officials are going to take a look at. Meanwhile, not only did the poor shooting for Boise State a problem, but Boise State has more than twice as many turnovers as Nevada. Nevada is very good, top 25 of the country at protecting the basketball. But Boise State, 11 turnovers, and Nevada has scored 17 points off of those turnovers. Compare that to Boise State's five giveaways, and, well, Nevada's five giveaways, and the Broncos have just five points off of them. So that has been a major difference in this game. We'll play on. Good piece of officiating there. Obviously, yeah, it looked worse than it was, but Abo trying to get through a screen. Himes misses the one and one, but Coleman gets it back only to get it taken away. Rice recovers the fumble, only to be stripped. All kinds of room. Blackshear rise and slams. What a defensive play from Keenan Blackshear. Max Rice handling point guard duties now for Boise State. It's a big lineup, but you got to make sure you're able to initiate offense, get into something good quickly. This Boise State arena here at Extra Mile has just been completely silenced. Thanks to the tough defense of Nevada, the poor shooting for Boise State, and the Wolfpack with a 13-point lead with less than eight minutes to go. Blackshear turns on the Jets right back to the left. And able to score. Gets by and then a terrific job of cutting the angle of the defender off, not allowing him to get back in front. All of a sudden, Blackshear picking it up, getting it started on the defensive end. Blackshear plays both ends of the floor as well as anybody in this conference. Opportunistic with a steal. Finishes it with a flush over the top. A little hang on the rim, a little smile. He likes what he sees from his Wolfpack teammates. The old adage is defense and rebounding travels. You don't hear it all that often about three-pointers unless you're the Nevada Wolfpack on fire tonight here at Boise State. Well, their last game, they knocked down 11 in a home win against Fresno State tonight. They've got 11 on the road here in Boise, and a bunch of different guys have get, gotten in on the action. Jared Lucas has knocked down two. Trey Coleman, Nick Davidson, Daniel Foster, Tylen Pope, one apiece, but Hunter McIntosh has five. That's the same amount as the Broncos on their own. 
This Nevada team came into conference one of, if not the worst, three-point shooting teams in the Mountain West. And now, here we are, closing in on the end of the regular season, and they've become one of, if not the best, three-point shooting team in the Mountain West as Dagan Hart gets the free throw. Well, a lot of that is growth and maturity as a team and understanding who needs to take those threes and where those threes are going to come by. It doesn't hurt when you've got McIntosh as well as Lucas who can get hot in a hurry. So the full court press is on. Nevada breaks it no problem. And Jared Lucas got all the way into the lane where he got bumped there by Meadow. <laughs> That's a, one of the more interesting dribble attacks I've seen throughout the year. Lucas wanted no part of Stanley at the rim. Meadow in backflow transition converges. A little bit of contact. Lucas sells it as if he was a soccer player. Gets himself to the line. It did look like Meadow was like trying to stop himself there. Maybe, yeah. the, maybe the train just kept going. Maybe one turn too many, but man, that's that's a tough break. That was an interesting play, though. Lucas wanted nothing to do with <laughs> Stanley at the rim. 14-point game. Boise State trying to climb out of a deep hole here on their home floor. Nevada's going for a fifth straight road win. And maybe that finishing touch to their tournament resume is a turnover right there. Coleman made it look easy. Coleman, a terrific job fighting to a front and then releasing that to go get the short-sided pass intended for Degenhardt. Baseline reverse taken away by Degenhardt. Anderson goes down. Degenhardt on the attack. Lost for a moment. Scramble underneath. Stanley gets fouled going up. Omar Stanley's going to get some free throws here. Foul on Daniel Buss for third personal. Team foul nine on the Wolfpack. Terrific hands from Foster to strip Degenhardt on that drive. Stanley, up Stanley right place, right time. At the line for a pair of free throws. So that's the third on Foster. How about the entire front court for... Nevada right now with three fouls. Foster, Himes, Davidson. And Rawlinson, the one of the backup point guards, is three himself. Nobody more than three, but Stanley misses the free throw. And boy, Boise State, who's been a good free throw shooting team, misses that one, and they just can't afford to give anything back right now. It looks like we're gonna go back the monitor here. Yeah! I'm not quite sure what they're looking at. That's kind of what Steve Alford is saying, too. What, what are you looking at here? And we'll, we'll try to get an explanation for you in a moment. Meanwhile, this is the kind of score right now that certainly will be sending some shockwaves across college basketball. If Nevada is, I think they're on the safely inside. And right now they have a, a 10 seed, according to Mike DeCorsi. But if you're going to involve... You know, the bubble teams in action and following some of the, the bubble results. St. John's got a really big win a little bit earlier tonight. Well, you look at Nevada and their resume. They're 40 in the net, 5-5 five and five in quad one games. You would think that's enough. But if you look at last year, Rutgers was 40 in the net, and they were left out of the tournament. So this is huge because Nevada doesn't want to leave anything to chance. So it looks like there was a hit to the face on this last play where Lucas and Anderson and where Lucas threw that right arm up around the neck of Roddy Anderson. And they are just going to not call anything there and move on and stick with the foul they called underneath the hoop. But upon further review, I mean, the NCAA has been really adamant about any plays, the head or neck, and you could see where Lucas stuck that arm out right there. Yeah, he could have seen where that would possibly have been converted to a, a flagrant one, but we've got a veteran crew. They've felt no need 
for that to be the case. There have been some potentially controversial calls tonight that have gone to the monitor, and, and so far every time, the officials haven't handed anybody the big one. They've just moved on, though Leon Rice did get a technical. Jared Lucas back out Coleman. Good look at a three. Doesn't go. Stanley way up for that rebound. In transition, Anderson is going to earn some free throws here. This Boise State has now gone a little over three minutes without a bucket. And this is where Anderson is at his best. He's extremely quick. He puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Gets himself fouled at the line for two. His decision making in the half court has improved over the course of the season. But he wants that game played at breakneck speed. Roddy Anderson started the year as the point guard at Boise State after transferring from UC San Diego. Was happy at UC San Diego, but the Tritons not postseason eligible this year despite having a very good season in the Big West. But Roddy Anderson comes to Boise State, starts the year as the starting point guard, loses the job for a while to Jace Whining, earned it back, and has been good down the stretch. So it's been a tough night tonight. And Foster working hard for the rebound, going to dribble out of traffic. Boise State's giving points away at the line right now on top of everything else. Ten to shoot for Lucas. He doesn't mind working a little clock. Three to shoot. Davidson underneath has to go up with it, and they're going to call a travel on Davidson, and Boise State gets the stop. They desperately need it. Well, Nevada recognized the switch, but Anderson, a nice job of fighting Davidson for position. He couldn't catch it cleanly, resulting in the travel. Boise State needs to get a bucket here. Anderson turns on the Jets, fouled on the floor. The both teams... Now on the double bonus, and we'll have a couple of free throws coming. So that's on Lucas, that's three now. On Jared Lucas, as Roddy Anderson goes to the strike, just missed two. A moment ago, Boise State as a team, just 14 of 21 from the line. You do get the sense that Boise State is, at this point, clinging on to hope here in this ball game, but certainly not out of it yet. A lot of basketball left, still over five minutes. But Anderson misses that one. So just one of two for the Bronco point guard. In this game, if that ends up winning, it could have massive implications for this weekend. Lucas in and out. Nevada and UNLV playing a rivalry game on Saturday. Max Rice shot fake. Gets the three to go. Big time three for Max Rice. Timeout called by Steve Alford, but Max Rice trying to spark this crowd. We've talked about how Lucas and McIntyre for Nevada can get hot. Max Rice for Boise State can do the same. At 35 on the road against New Mexico with seven threes. Don't let him get going if you're Nevada. That three has re-energized this extra mile arena crowd, breathing some life back into this building. Three minutes ago, Nevada had a 15-point lead in this game. Boise State has since answered on a 7-0 run. Max Rice's three gets him into double figures. And now Boise State down but not out with 436 left in this ball game. And we know we have seen madness all year long in this Mountain West Conference, and maybe we see it again tonight. Well, just when you think you've figured this league out, somebody goes on the road and gets a big win, or somebody has an enormous 
performance, yeah. whether home or on the road. So many good teams, so many good players. It's it's a fun league to cover this year, that's for sure. And the Mountain West has been one of the very best in all of college basketball. This is Mike DeCorsi's projection that came out early today. He's got the Big 12 with nine in, SEC seven in. The Mountain West right there with the Big Ten and the Big East with six in. If of course, his forecast stands would be pretty phenomenal to do that. That would be a record for this Mountain West Conference. And every night, it's been exciting basketball. It's delivered high-level basketball. Teams did an outstanding job in non-conference. Even a place like here at Boise State has been awesome when it comes to the crowd. In fact, this year they set the season attendance record with their crowd tonight. 169,017 over the course of the year here at Extra Mile Arena. They've never had that kind of turnout before here. McIntosh up top trying to quiet them all and does. McIntosh, six threes now tonight. What a performance. Just talking about the different players stepping up at different points this season. McIntosh might be the most unlikely performer in a situation like this. 22 is the most he's ever scored while at Nevada. That's what he has tonight and ends up getting a takeaway here. 22 and looking for more. Hunter McIntosh made six threes against San Jose State when Blackshear went down with an injury in the first half. And on the night Blackshear returns says, hey, don't forget about me. I'm still able to score and he has done so in a big way. Lucas now. Seven seconds. McIntosh one more time. And the foul on Tyson Dagan. 24 for McIntosh and a chance to add one more after this strong take as he knocks it down from distance. Nevada has got him 13 with 327 to play. We got a stunner here in Boise tonight. Nevada rolling the Broncos 66-52. Every night there's stunners in the Mountain West Conference. How about that score right now? UNLV with a seven-point lead deep in that game over San Diego State. UNLV still with title hopes alive in the Mountain West Conference. It's worthless to try to predict games in this league at this point of the season. So you get big performances by individuals such as McIntosh here in Boise tonight that just completely flips the script of what you think is going to happen. Uh, I tell you what, about three days left in this regular season while teams are jockeying for position in the Mountain West Tournament next week in Las Vegas. This is a fascinating finish to the Mountain West this year. Here's McIntosh trying to convert the three-point play. Can't do it. You know, on top of everything else, I mean, if this game holds as it's been and if San Diego State ends up going down, there are going to be a lot of happy folks in Logan, Utah. Now, they still have to take care of business. They have to travel to San Jose State tomorrow, though the Spartans have struggled down the stretch of this season. And then they have a home game against New Mexico. But they would then basically control their own destiny, which they kind of do anyway, but really would be in complete control of it. As Foster just picked up his fourth foul. Yeah, that would be a tremendous accomplishment for Utah State first-year coach Danny Sprinkle if they were to win the league, considering they didn't return a single point from the roster a season ago. Nobody knew what to expect out of them. They've obviously overachieved in regards to what the expectations were. But that... New Mexico game. New Mexico is going to have an unbelievable amount to play for. They've struggled a little bit recently. But some of the bracketologists kind of have them as one of the last teams in. Yeah, that could be massive because it could be a championship opportunity for Utah State. And it would also be maybe the last big chance New Mexico would have to bolster their resume, which has gone from solidly in to true bubble territory as Lucas falls away, misses. And it's going to be a foul against like Davidson ceiling underneath. 
which will be his fourth. Bell is on Nick Davidson, fourth personal. 241 to go in this one. Nevada 66, Boise State 54. And Steve Alford and his Road Warriors trying to make it five in a row away from Reno. A win tonight would also be nine of ten down the stretch of Mountain West play, which is a remarkable accomplishment if they can get it done. Just kind of get the feeling that maybe Nevada is peaking at the right time. Playing outstanding basketball. Ten-point game, though, after the made free throws. Lucas, as McIntosh is able to break the press. Well, Boise, you don't have to foul just yet. This is an important possession. If you can get a stop, you still got around a little over two minutes left. If you score, you're still in it. Davidson walked. So Boise gets that stop, and the Broncos trying to put together that last-ditch effort here in this game. You feel like this is a possession they got to score. They need to get a, a quick look at it. I would expect a pin down for Abo or something to get Degenhart quickly on the block. Again, great defense on the perimeter from Nevada, not given any opportunities for dribble penetration. Whiting underneath. Abo, big look right there, and he delivers. So now you're in the territory for Boise State. You still don't have to foul. You see if you can force a turnover, get a stop. Lucas trying to drain as much clock as he can, and then a foul there is going to be on Abo. Lucas, a little unaware on the weak side, gives Abo an angle and time to make a cut into an opening. A big shot from Abo, Abo, who struggled from the field. Two of nine now on the evening. It's Jared Lucas, one of the best free throw shooters in the country. Rattles that one in. So the Blackshear back on, and we're seeing Jace Whiting running the point down the stretch here for Boise State. The four starters trying to knock this comeback, but Lucas gets both free throws. Dagenhart all alone for the dunk. Clock keeps going. Trying to force a turnover. Blackshear now across midcourt. Want to foul Blackshear, not Lucas, if you have to decide between the two. Exactly right. You can tell the ball is trying to get to Lucas's hands. A good screen and slip from Dagenhart for the quick two on that end of the floor, but official did call the foul. Putting Blackshear at the line. That is a good break for Boise State because Lucas, an over 90% free throw shooter. Blackshear, not so much. Right around 65% on the season. He gets that one. It's the fourth on Abo. So now he can't foul, but that's an important free throw right here. He gets this one. It becomes essentially a four possession game. Can't. Whiting hustling. Gets fouled by Lucas on the floor, but he'll get two free throws with both teams in the double bonus. Fourth on Lucas. Good recognition from Whiting. A lot of teams go into that action late in games because it puts the defense in such a bind. You could throw ahead and chase it. You could flip it into a dribble handoff, or you can keep it as the ball handler in that situation where if there's a little bit of contact, usually with the head of steam that you're going to have, you're going to put the defense in a position where they get called for a foul. So Whiting with the miss. Again, Boise State has given up a lot of points at the foul line tonight. 12 of 20 in the second half. 
18 to 26 for the game, so under 70% are the Broncos from the stripe. Eight-point game. Good Boise State. Keep the ball out of Lucas's hands. The gamble go for a quick steal and then be solid. Whiting was trying to foul Blackshear there, but he got rid of it quickly to Lucas, and that's, again, the guy you don't want to foul. He had no choice. And now we'll see Jared Lucas go to the line. Has just been such a solid, settling presence for Nevada. 17 tonight. Hunter McIntosh, no doubt, has been the star with 24, but Lucas is one of the top players in this league for good reason. So even though Boise State has been trying to mount this comeback here, they've made three straight shots, but they're not getting stops on the other side. They're having a foul, and Nevada's done a great job making their free throws in crunch time. On the game, not so much. 63% in the second half, 62 on the game, but in critical moments, it's been Lucas coming through. Whiting gets his defender up. Rice scores, but just a minute left now. One minute remaining in the game. Eight-point game. Three on one for Nevada. McIntosh gets fouled there by Max Rice. Meanwhile, an upset in Las Vegas. UNLV beats San Diego State tonight. That is a huge one in the Mountain West Conference. And if Nevada goes on to win this game, and Utah State were to lose one of their next two, that game on Saturday could end up being for the Mountain West Championship, or at least a share of a Mountain West Championship. There are a lot of different variables that are going to be played out over these next four days or so. But for Boise State, a big-time opportunity slipped through the cracks tonight. I'm sure San Diego State feeling the same way. And some added irony to this is Boise State and San Diego State get together on Friday for their regular season finale. Rice could have fire up top off the mark. And it's just been that kind of night for Boise State shooting from three. Broncos 6 of 22 from distance. And it's hard to win a game when you struggle like that from beyond the three-point line and your opponent knocks down 12 themselves. Blackshear is digging hard. Just fouled out of the ball game. He's going to send Blackshear to the line. So digging hard is done. 15 points, 11 rebounds, a double-double for Tyson digging hard. But now we are seeing this extra mile arena become extra empty here in Boise, Idaho. Tough way to go out for the seniors, in particular Max Rice. They've had a tremendous run here in recent years and there's been a resurgence in interest. And you mentioned it set an all time record for attendance over the course of the season here at extra mile arena. I think things are building in the right direction for this continuing to be a difficult place to play for opponents. Meanwhile, for Nevada, if they weren't a tournament lock already, they are now. This is going to be their sixth quad one win as Max Rice gets hit. <laughs> Not a good foul there no. from Nevada and Trey Coleman. There's no reason to stop the clock and foul with 37 seconds left, even though you're up 12. Crazier things have happened in the Mountain West this year. Wyoming was down a similar position with about 55 seconds of Colorado State, came back and won that game in overtime. So they're going to wave that off on the lane violation on top of everything else that has been Boise State's night. So the main free throw gets negated. 
But how about Nevada on their way to a 25th win? They're about to be 12 and 5 in the Mountain West. Six quad one wins. I mean, that is remarkable. And a fifth straight road win for Steve Alford's team. I mean, I don't know that Nevada's resume could look any better than this. The only thing that was kind of holding them back before was that uh, net at 40. Uh, but with this win, that could really shoot up. It could. I mean, 25 wins now on the season, 12 and 5 in a very difficult Mountain West league. You know, that net has become such an important number. We've touched on it throughout tonight's broadcast. You would imagine you're in with a net of 40, but you don't want to leave any right. worry going into Selection Sunday. I would imagine they move up a few spots after tonight's win. Now, point differential in itself is no longer factored, but generally speaking, the point differential is a reflection of your offensive and defensive efficiency, and that is a big part of it. And right now, well, Nevada has been quite efficient of double digits on the road at Boise State. A top 25 team in the metrics. Dagenhart's three, missed. Put back, good. Abo gets it, nine points for Abo all in the second half. Now Nevada can just let the clock run. And that's exactly what's gonna happen. Jared Martin, Jared Lucas, the fist pump, feeling good, Nevada goes on the road to Boise State. They get a double digit win and maybe that finishing touch to the resume for the Nevada Wolfpack solidly in now, 76-66. The Wolfpack run right through Boise State for a fifth straight road win. Well, to get wins this point in the season, you've got to have guys special up, show up and make special performances. Hunter McIntosh, did exactly that 26 points a perfect six of six from beyond the arc an impressive display tonight for mcintosh a career night for him 26 points lucas added 19 as nevada gets a 10 point road win for dan dickow and our entire crew i'm trent rush saying so long from boise idaho final score tonight it's nevada 76 boise state 66. this has been a presentation of the fox sports networks your home for all your college basketball action have a great rest of your night